right guys, Sunday afternoon. We actually got some blue sky today. It's been raining a lot out here, so I figured I'll take the skyway out today. It's nice and shiny and clean, and it's a beautiful day. So let's take a bike ride first, and then we're going to knock out a magazine review uh, later today. I found some uh, magazines. I was going through my, uh, of all places, a, uh, <laughs> a bathroom, in my bathroom cabinet, there was this plastic uh, storage container in there, and I opened it up. I go, what do I have in here? I hadn't looked in there in years and there was like lo and behold there was a couple bmx plus magazines in there there was some uh trucking magazines vw magazines and i'm like wow i must have stored these in here and forgot all about it so i think i'll be taking a look at one of those bmx magazines later today but for right now uh since it is about 60 something degrees i figured i might as well get a little bike ride in first and chat with you guys in a little bit all right guys welcome back okay so we're gonna do a magazine today so this one's cool because I found this magazine about three days ago. I was cleaning out uh, the cabinet underneath my bathroom sink and I noticed there was like this plastic tub <laughs> underneath the sink and I was like, wonder what's in there. I just thought it was old bathroom supplies because I had shoved everything in there and put it under my sink when I had moved here, man, probably 20 years ago. And I pulled it out, I opened it up and sure enough, there was like magazines in there. So there was some trucking magazines, old VW magazines, and I found three BMX Plus magazines, and I didn't even know they were in there, so score. Uh, this one is April 1987, so this one's going to be pretty cool, because so far I've done, uh, I think I did one Bicycles and Dirt magazine, everything else has been BMX action. I have a lot of BMX action left to do, obviously, but we're going to do this one tonight. So on the cover... Uh, looks like we have Enchanted Ramp Ritual, Kings of Vert, Make Magic Madness. I'm not sure who the writer is here. It's a Kuwahara writer. I'm not really big on the uh, freestyle, so it's hard for me to identify him. In the corner, we do have, I can see we've got Rick Palmer here in the middle with uh, Pete Longcaravage on, on Haro. It's about the right time, too, April 87. They're going to do a scooter spectacular. You can see somebody's getting a little rad there on a scooter. And who's rider gone mad? Dominguez takes on crazed bag lady. <laughs> Not sure what that means. We got the AFA finals in here. And then an exclusive first test GT hottest bike ever. So let's see. Let's crack it open. And let's see kind of the differences between what you can expect from BMX Plus to BMX Action. I think both magazines are amazing. Uh, so let's just go through it. So on the first inside cover, we got the Haro team here. So this is all freestyle here. Uh, first in freestyle, we got Dennis McCoy, Ron Wilkerson, Rick Molitonero, Brian Blyther, uh, Dave Nuri. I probably said that wrong, sorry Dave, and then Joe Johnson. So this is your uh, factory squad for your freestyle team for Haro. Really, really cool ad. I like it a lot. Inside cover, we got the GT Pro Series. We're going to test that today. Dino, Dino Detour, uh, the ABA Grand Nationals. All right, I love when I get a Grand Nationals magazine. The Pete and Ronnie con uh, confrontation comes down to the wire. That'll be interesting to look at. Freestyle competitions for the AFA Master Final and King of Vert 2. How to do a tabletop. Scooters, the ultimate half pipe part 2. Radical Rick. Wow, Radical Rick. I love Radical Rick. Inside scoop, mailbag, ask the BM experts, trick stuff, and parting shots. So, should be a good magazine. Let's get to the next one. And let's move on. April 1987, as I mentioned, guys. Oh, I remember this ad. So we got RL. So I believe RL was leaving Redline at this point. Maybe he wasn't on Redline because you notice this is obviously a Redline he's on, but there's no Redline logos on it. I don't know if that was because he's not on Redline or maybe they were focusing on just the Diacomp portion of the uh, of the ad. But really cool on the girder with the guy <laughs> with the construction worker here. That's a pretty cool shot. All right, let's keep on going here. What else do we got here? Oh, here we go. We got a pretty cool Diamondback ad. This looks like Dominguez. Mike Dominguez doing a helicopter on his signature model, Strike Zone. Diamondback bicycles, see the Strike Zone at your local DB dealer today. So pretty cool. Uh, like I said, not a big freestyle guy, but I really respect riders like Dominguez. This guy was just amazing. And he's still riding today. All right, let's go to the next one. Ooh, this page is a little fragile. I better be careful. Want to know how to get rad? You get BMX Plus for $14.98 for the year. That's about average. 
Oh, what do we got here? Inside scoop. So we got some racing stuff to look at here. So we got ABA's national number one amateur, Eric Carter, is hanging tough from Hutch, hanging tough with Hutch. So Eric Carter won the uh, won the national title for the amateurs. That's awesome. Uh, Eric looks like he had another son here. And Tommy Brackens is looking for a new sponsor. Brackens leaves GT. Wow, that's a big thing. Uh, I don't. Let's see why. In a major shocker, world champion Tommy Brackens has announced that he's leaving GT to look for another sponsor. Tommy says GT offered him a smaller salary with increased contingencies for 1987, but he couldn't afford to take it because the mortgage payments on his $81,000 house he recently bought. And Tommy has spoken with CW and Murray, but. So far, nobody has come up with a deal that satisfies him. Uh, it's kind of weird when you read this for a second because uh, I'm not sure where Tommy was living at the time, but an $87,000, $81,000 house, man, I wish houses cost that much now. Uh, but it's pretty cool. So he ended up leaving, talking with CW, talking with Murray. And I think, man, I kind of wonder, did he go to Torker after that or was Torker before GT? Honestly, guys, I don't know. I think Torker was before GT, and I think Tommy started winding his career down, and he started Bracken's Bicycles uh, probably sometime after this. Uh, GT won't be without a pro for 1987. However, rookie pro Kevin Hull and veteran Gary Ellis are sure staying on the GT team roster. So that's pretty cool. So they kept that. They held on to Ellis and Kevin Hull, and then they got rid of Miranda, I guess, because they, not Miranda, excuse me, uh, they got rid of Brackens. Uh, kind of a bum deal. But anyway, let's keep on moving on here. Oh, what do we got here? They got the hidden contest is over. Uh, this is some reader art of the month here. That's a pretty cool shot. Let's see if we can zoom into that really quick so you guys can get a better look at the reader art here. Pretty rad. Freestyle motivated, but very, very cool. I like it. Okay, let's zoom back out again. Oops, sorry guys. There we go. Got dynamic BMX. It looks like some sort of bike shop here. Pretty cool. Oh, the free coaster. I like it. I mentioned this in a magazine review uh, not long ago. I'm not too sure what the free coaster does per se, you know, but uh, it looks like a coaster brake, but maybe you can still pedal backwards. I have no idea what it does. Okay, let's check out the mailbag. So we got a couple things here. Let's just read a short one. I like to read these. Rad mom, dear BMX Plus, you know how everybody complains about their parents. Well, my mom said she would buy my safety equipment and a uniform if I worked to buy my own freestyle bike. Rad mom, huh? My friends and I are making a quarter pipe in, in shop class. What do you think? Pretty cool. The response from... Uh, Coming from BMX Plus, cool on both accounts, Nate. It's good to hear some positive words about parents. Pretty cool. All right, let's read another one. Stupid things. dear. And, oh, I'm sorry. That letter was from Nate Lessinger, Letzinger in Jacksonville, Indiana. This one is from uh, James Neville at a Richland Center, Wisconsin. Dear BMX Plus, do you know that gummy bears are really a way of getting rid of toxic waste? <laughs> Did you know that yelling at your brakes really does make them work better? Did you know that school is another dimension? <laughs> Did you know I'm saying all these stupid things so you'll put me in your magazine? That's pretty funny. Okay, it worked, but only if only because, like you said, like I'm sorry. Let's start again. Okay, it worked, but only because what? Oh my gosh! But only because we like to say stupid things once in a while too. Did you know that dropping a 500-pound steel ball and an egg will probably crack it? <laughs> Did you know that kicking your bike really hard will probably hurt your foot? Did you know that freestyle and BMX racing are ultra rad and a lot of fun? That's pretty funny. All right, let's move on because otherwise I'm going to take 45 minutes to do this. But those are pretty cool. I always like reading those. Oh, this is a cool ad. We got uh, Greg Hill. He was racing for Redline at the time. And then we got uh, Ron Wilkerson here on Haro. And then, oh, wow, check that out. That's a really cool shot. What do we got here? This is an extra brake lever you guys spotted on Martin's bars is for doing bar rides, but he says he can now do them without the, without the extra. Oh, wow, he had a brake lever so he can actually hit it with his foot. That's pretty cool. Wow. What does this one say? This is Ask the BM Experts. Uh, you can't do that, dear BM Experts. Uh, I have an SE PK Ripper and... I'm wondering if I can freestyle on it. My friend says I can't, 
I rely on your advice. And it says, uh, this is from Dan Williams from Bangkok, Thailand. Wow. It says, you could freestyle on a, on a 1956 Radical Flyer if you wanted to. You can certainly get rad on a PK. As, as a matter of fact, a few years ago, before they actually made freestyle bikes, PK rippers were some of the most popular scoots used for freestyle. They're light, strong, and handle well, and with some bolt-on pegs and platforms, you'll be all set. That's pretty cool. Again, all freestyle related. Whoa, look at this ad. That's awesome. Serious business from the Mongoose, California. You got uh, Travis Chipres, Sam Mariano, and, and Eric Group with the <laughs> sitting here with the Ferrari. This looks like Miami Vice, and I love it. And this is a pretty sick Mongoose. It's all blacked out. Oh, man, that's an awesome looking bike, actually. Really cool ad. Really cool ad. I, I loved it when the big guys were all going at it in the magazine with their advertising. I thought it was really cool. Okay, let's move on. We got more Aspium experts. and Oh, check it out. Now, this is kind of cool because I looked at this earlier. This race, I went to it. Uh, the U.S. Nationals in Bakersfield, March 21st and 22nd. Now, this race, this was in 1987. I clearly remembered. I got a third. I still have the trophy. Uh, I, it was super, super, super muddy. It rained really, really hard, and we raced on Saturday only. Uh, my parents took me and my cousin, my aunt, met us out in Bakersfield, and we raced out there, and it was awesome, but it was really, really muddy. Uh, I, maybe I can attach a picture of the trophy. if I, It's in my garage. And then we had the uh, Spring Nationals here in Stockton, California, April 18th and 19th. Now, here's the cool thing. I raced this race. And I raced this race. So I got to do two nationals that year because they were all relatively close. At the time, I lived in uh, Union City, California. So getting to Bakersfield was probably like a three, three and a half hour drive. And then we went to the uh, Stockton race, which was about an hour and a half maybe from where I used to live. And now, ironically, I live out here. Uh, but yeah, this race here, the spring nationals in Stockton, I didn't do very well. Again, we only raced on Saturday. And I crashed in every single round. We had three rounds to qualify. Uh, and I crashed in the first round, crashed in the second round. In the third round, I was actually leading. And you had to go, the first turn was, you had to go up and over a bridge. And then it corkscrewed around underneath the bridge. And I went up on the bridge, slid out in the first, slid out up there and then, while I was leading. So that was kind of the end of my day. I never even finished a lap. Uh, but still, it was a really cool experience. All right, let's keep going. We got some cool t-shirts here. We got a CW Racing one. I really like that one. And I like the Odyssey one here. A little mountain bike action here. Lots of freestyle. Uh, really cool. Look at the Hollywood Mike Miranda one down here. I like it. All right, let's keep going. Whoa, here we go. GT Pro Series team model. And we got, uh, looks like that's got to be Billy Griggs. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's Billy Griggs. This bike was seriously uh, top of the line. The ultimate GT for all around handling GT's top of the line uh, model team model is absolutely incredible. Mr. Bill again, you can see Billy was tearing it up and it, this is a stock bike right out of the right out of right off the shelf. You can buy it in a bike shop and it had all these components on it. So you definitely got your money's worth for this one. Uh, let's take a look at some of the uh, specs on it. If we can get to it. That is there we go. Oh, here's some more great shots, more t-shirts, but here we go. Got Billy pulling out of a berm here, power wheel, power wheelie here. Uh, Billy Griggs has been riding a lot of bikes for BMX Plus, seldom, if ever, has he found one he's liked as much as this one. So even Billy was a big fan of this bike, and check it out, dude. Let's take a, let's take a closer look at it. I'll just bring it up to the lens there. That's a pretty cool setup. I'm not a big fan of the laid-back Z-Post. I know it was a big deal for a lot of the taller riders. And like I said, I had said before, I tried a laid-back Z-Post really just for the aesthetics, just for the way it looked. And uh, yeah, it wasn't my thing. Uh, eventually, I went back to a straight Z-Post, but uh, really, really cool build. And look at these cranks. Those things are amazing. The Power GT Power Series cranks. Those things are worth a pretty penny now, I imagine. Really, really cool. Okay, let's go to the next one here. We got Kevin Sheepdog Hole here doing his thing, crossing it up. Kevin Hole got his first chance to ride the GT Pro Series team model the same day we did, and he found out the same thing we did. The bike was meant to fly. Very, very cool. Look at the Amy ground grips. 
<laughs> New die comps, Tech 7 levers. Oh wow, I saw this movie, Winners Take All. It's a motocross movie. It's a little corny, like most of them are, but it was pretty good. I remember watching it. That was a pretty good movie. I can't even tell you what it's about, really. I just know I watched it a couple times. Uh, we got BMX done dirt cheap here. What is this all about? Getting into BMX dirt racing it will never come any cheaper. The American Bicycle Association is offering a special six-month membership to introduce you to the only major sport created for kids by kids. BMX, join now because the offer won't last. What was the membership cost for you? $19.95. Wow. Is that it? Yeah. Remember all this for $19.95. You get the t-shirt, you get the monthly subscription, which was uh, six big issues of American BMXer. Um, that is really cool. Now, the thing about, uh, you know, this is I think at 19 bucks, I mean, that's super cheap, let's face it, but it's 1987. I think now it's a membership, a renewal membership is 60 or $65, but that also includes like racing cruisers too, if you want to. So you don't have to buy two memberships. I gave up racing cruisers. I did it for one season from 1998 to 99. I raced cruisers for just that one year and it was okay. It was pretty fun. I just missed riding the 20 inch bikes. I just, uh, I thought it was a little bit more fun for me. All right. What do we got here? Ooh, the velodrome AFA masters. That's a really cool shot. Really cool shot. I love it. I like it. All you see is the rider up here. And I think that's Dennis McCoy. If I'm right, but see how it's all blacked out and he's in front of the lights here. This is a really, really cool shot. It must have been strange for him to re-enter because you can see the lighting wasn't the greatest. And he, when he was coming down, that must have been really freaky for him to hit this quarter pipe because you probably couldn't see very well. These are really good shots here too. AFA Masters, Eddie Roman here. That's a great shot right there. Oh, who is this Guajara rider? Let's figure this out. There aren't too many guys in the world who can do a no-footed can-can. Chris... Obermeyer is one of them. So I'm assuming, wait, is this the same guy on the cover? Maybe not. Who is the writer on the cover, guys? I, I want to give him props. Let, let's, let's look it up. Let's see here. Uh, doesn't, oh, here we go, on the cover. Oh, it's Tim Rogers. Okay, so that's Tim Rogers there. All right, let's get back to the nitty gritty here. Got the Odyssey. I had a set of these uh, brakes. These are really cool. Uh, they fit on my PK Ripper really well because the PK Ripper, I couldn't put the standard Diacomp uh, brake caliper on there because it wouldn't reach the rim. These worked perfect though. And then we have uh, more Velodrome stuff here. Dennis and RL, we're going at it. RL Osborne was in there. The King of Rock, Dennis McCoy, run DMC'd his way to a pro flatline win. Overall for the day, Pro Fratland, and overall titles for the year. Wow. Oh, yeah, check it out. Arl Osborne was in his general debut, so he went to General Bicycles, and that's probably, like, why that ad that we saw with Diacomp a few pages back, all the Redline logos are off the bike, and that probably explains why, because he was racing for General now, or riding for General now, excuse me. More of the velodrome shots. Uh, let's see, this one is for Ron Camaro, and then we have, it says, uh, Rise of the Unknowns, Test Force SE Force Boy Larry Mannion, Backward Walk Around. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool. All right, we got Frankfurt BMX ad here, and then, oh, here we go. Hold on, guys, did I skip something? I did, I skipped something, I'm sorry. We had some more velodrome action here. Uh, these are really great shots. Let's see who won these. So for Pro Ramp, Mike Dominguez took the win. Pro Frat, uh, Flatland, Dennis McCoy took the win. Uh, for Pro Ramp, though, Brian Blyther took second. Dennis McCoy took third. Todd Anderson fourth. Eddie Fiola with fifth. And then we had Rich uh, Seeger with sixth. And Hugo Gonzalez for seventh. And then Pro Flatland, let's just go through it. So we had Dennis McCoy who won it. So Dennis came in first in Flatland and third on vert on ramp. That's pretty cool. Arl Osborne took second. Woody Itson came in third. And then it was Rick Allison for fourth. Martin Aparijo fifth. Eddie Fiola sixth. And then this is getting hard to read. There was a tie for sixth. So Rich Seeger tied Eddie. And then we had Robert Peterson for Skyway. He got eighth. 
Maurice Meyer, also a sky rider, with ninth. Pete Augustine, tenth. Tied for tenth with Dave. Uh, I can't pronounce that. Notria. Dave Vanderspeck, uh, rest in peace, Dave. He came in twelfth, and then Fred Blood, thirteenth. Wow, that's a lot of uh, a lot of riders. But it looks like the money's paid out all the way through fourth place. So that's pretty cool. All right, two hip ad here. That's really cool. And here we go. All right, let's get into it. So now we're in the ABA Grands. This is my favorite stuff to look at, obviously. And here's the thing. We got Ronnie Anderson here, and he's riding for Hardy's Restaurants. I actually remember seeing this. And, you know, I kind of wonder, you know, uh, I think Ronnie got kind of a bad rap. I know that he was a controversial rider, but at the same time, I, I would have loved to see him get take advantage of more bigger, uh, more corporate sponsors. But that's a really cool thing he got. At least he got he got backing from Hardy, and he's out there doing his thing. And we got uh, Pete Longcarabich here on the Haro Group 1 RS1. One of my favorite bikes that I've ever owned. It looks like we got Gary Ellis back here on GT, and then there's... Uh, we got Harry Larry here, of course, on Diamondback. It's a good shot. So let's see what it says here. Last year, Ronnie edged out Pistol Pete by, by slimmed of margins. But I guess, oh, slimmest of margins, I'm sorry, to get the number one pro title in the ABA. The tables turned this year in Oklahoma. Pete won the battle and the war. So Pete won the race and got the title. Uh, so that's pretty cool. National number one, national number two, and then it flopped. So these guys used to have some epic battles. Let's keep going. Oh, this is a great shot of Kevin Hole. Look at that. Wow. He's getting busy on the cruiser there. I like the old rock number one plate. Race of Champions is actually a Haro plate in red. That's really cool. We got Harry Larry here. It says, Harry Larry made it into the ABA's Hall of Fame on Thursday night. Then showed how he got there with great racing all weekend. Third in the Honda Super Cup. Fourth in the Pro Open at the Grand. So, Harry made the... Uh, so, Harry got inducted into the BMX Hall of Fame in 1987, which is crazy because he's still actively racing today, although he is on a suspension. We won't see him on the track until March. Oh, oh by the way, there was the uh, Winter Nationals uh, for US, USA BMX over the weekend, and I'm, I still wanted to go back and review some of the pro races. That's kind of on my agenda. Hopefully this week I can get that done. We got Ricky Gilbert here on CW. And then it looks like Kenny made a May. He won the cruiser title there. That's a great shot of Kenny. Here's the overall track in the ABA Grand. So I'm going to try to zoom in so you can. Oh, oh, go. Oh, sorry, guys. I hit the camera. Let's see if we can get in a little bit here. There's your track for the ABA Grands in 1987. I'm pretty sure. I have some footage on this in some of my previous videos where I review the actual races. Uh, it was either the 80, might have been the 85 Grands. Oh, I'm going to have to look this up. I'll have to go back and review some of my videos, which, which is really cool because sometimes as I go through these magazines, I start looking at them and think to myself, oh, wow, I need to see if I can find that race. So it gives me ideas of what races I want to look at and so forth. We got the Air Uni ad here. I actually remember this one with the old Corvette Stingray in the background. This thing's probably like $100,000 now. <laughs> These wheel covers are ridiculous, man. You know, the frame geometry on this bike, it just looks nuts. It almost looks like a... Uh, I remember those F1 bikes that the people were... They, they were kind of the rage in the late 80s. You know, they look like road bikes, but they were 20-inch bikes. And that, that's what this geometry looks like to me. It's kind of strange. And that's pretty cool. The new national number one, Eric Carter. How does it feel to be number one in the am the number one amateur in the ABA? Just ask Eric Carter. He knows he was riding for Hutch at the time. So that's really cool that Eric won that. 30 Knobs podcast guy. Love that show. Oh my gosh, look at this picture. That's like perfection. I really love Chrome Molly still. I know that Chrome Molly is kind of the thing of the past because now we're most race bikes are aluminum and now even carbon fiber, but I mean, you can't beat the way this chrome molly looks and these beaded welds, and this is just really beautiful. It's like a piece of jewelry. It's a, That's why I really appreciate uh, Dale Holmes' bike, the Divide. I think that thing looks really cool. Chelsea Brooks, number 29. Fred Johnson, number 69. And Ronnie Anderson, number one in this shot right here. And then Matt Hayden, national number one cruiser. So he won the national number one cruiser title in 87. Matt Hayden flew to Oklahoma with a shot at both the amateur and cruiser titles in the ABA. 
Eric Carter stopped him on his tw on his way to the first one, but Hayden looked uh, took the cruiser battle running away. So that's really cool. So he got that one. All right, let's go to the next page. Yeah, let's see where we're at. Oh, we got a big freestyle ad for GT here. It's pretty cool. Love these banners, man. How many of you would kill to have one of these banners hanging in your garage? That's really cool. GT Freestyle, Pro Freestyle Tour. Oh, wow, look at the orange colors on this one on, the, on Martin's GT. That's really cool. We got the purple. I'm kind of colorblind. I guess that's purple or violet. I don't know what you'd want to call it. Pro Performer, more Pro Performer stuff. There's so many different levels of these bikes. We even got a Junior here, which I didn't even know existed. And then there's the scooters for GT. Those are pretty cool. And then the race models. Here's the GT Pro Series model. It's all blacked out. I love that one. And then we have the team model here. Oh, the Pro Series and the team model. That's really cool. This is a pretty big ad for GT. Here's the GT Pro Series right here. This is a really great setup. And the GT Mach 1. Great. And you can just get the frame and fork right here. Which is really cool, Pro Series frame and fork, which is probably the way I would have went, you know, because I, I did buy complete bikes, but I also really enjoy just getting the frame and fork and just do, creating your own, and that's how I do it now. I don't really buy completes anymore. Uh, so as I look at, I've looked at completes that look really cool, especially the Chase stuff looks really cool. Oh wow, check this out. We got the GT Pro Series cranks here. Uh, the race bars, I love the GT race bars. I've always have. I think these are very usable even today. You got the GT freestyle bars and all this, all the freestyle stuff is just dominating. You know, as you look through this ad, most of it's freestyle. But hell, that's where the money was. Okay, let's keep going. So you can look at that. That's a GT Pro, uh, Pro Performer. You can tell by the bend right there. That's really cool. But we got more ABA Grands action here. And it says here, uh, it was a good day for spinners all the way around. Richie Anderson joined the team as a pro. Diana won the girls title and the team won the ABH shop team trophy for the year. So we got Richie Anderson right here racing for a bike shop. I mean, it's 1987. And uh, so I, I think that was getting towards the uh, backside of Richie's career. Uh, and it's really weird to see him <laughs> not with top wheels on, but he's still kicking ass as you can see right there. We got a good shot here, at Pete. So let's take a look and see who did uh, who did what. Uh, it's hard to see without my contact or with these contacts on. AA Pro, uh, Pete Longkarovich won that one. Uh, Sean Texas took second. Ronnie Anderson third. It looks like Hans Nissan with the fourth. Gary Ellis with the fifth. Todd Slavic sixth. Cody Smart seventh, and then Rick Palmer picked up the eighth. And that's for Double A Pro. Uh, John Anderson actually won the Pro Open. That's really cool. Looks like Eddie King took second. Richard Fleming with the third, and Harry Larry with the fourth. Todd Slavic picked up fifth, and Greg Hill with the sixth. Todd Blazer seventh, and then finally Ron Anderson, or Richie Anderson, he picked up eighth in the Pro Open. Uh, so Richie didn't make double A, but he did make the Pro Open main, which is pretty cool. Who won Pro Cruiser? Todd Slavic won Pro Cruiser. Frank Post took second. All right, Frank. Richie Anderson picked up the third. Richie's still killing it on a cruiser. Hans Nissan took fourth. Rick Palmer picked up the fifth, and then it's uh, Kevin, I'm not going to be able to say this very well, looks like Adidote, and then Neil Allen, Eric Roop with the eighth. So pretty cool. That's your 87 grand finishes. Really cool. Oh, we got here, Action BMX Cycle Company. Man, this is really cool. It's a two-page ad. They had everything in here. But again, lots and lots of freestyle stuff, man. Okay, let's go to the next page here. They're sticking together, so... We got the Dino Pro Tour, all the all new '87 model Dino Pro Tour. I like watching the Rad BMX builds guy because he does a lot of this freestyle stuff, and you know the stuff that I normally wouldn't have bought. I kind of appreciate to see it all being restored and rebuilt by this guy. He's probably one of the best builders. I think his name is Sean. His stuff is just incredible. Okay, let's keep going. Oh wow! Check out this general ad. General Bicycles, and we got RL doing his thing. That's really cool. This must have been a huge contract for this guy because he got so much face time in the magazine. He's a very popular rider. Okay, more of the dyno test. Look at the bullseye cranks. Those are badass. Freestyle handlebar and, and stem combo from something called H&L. Wow. 
Oh, I never even heard of that. I don't even remember that ad. We got a California number one California hot skateboards warehouse. Blah blah blah. Oh, check out this MCS ad. <laughs> That's really cool. I know. And then we got something here called lychee. Looks like brakes and stems. Oh, here comes all the scooters. <laughs> I guess these were really popular with the younger kids because I remember little kids riding these around. And funny story, I we used to ride a lot in uh, Treeview in Hayward. That was like my normal practicing spot. And there was one guy that rode there with us. His name was uh, Ernest Boston, Ernie Boston. And he raced for Factory Boss for a little while. And I, when he, he moved out to California and I met him at Treeview and he was just ultra fast, way faster than I ever could have been. And uh, he used to chase kids away, man. They would come over to Treeview and ride their scooters. And he would be like, get out of here, no scooters. He would kick them out because the bottom of the scooters used to scrape the tops of our jumps and kind of they kind of throw off the lips and stuff like that. So he would just kick them out of there. And Ernie was a big dude, so <laughs> they weren't going to argue with him. Uh, and then we had Nighthawk BMX, more of the scooter action here. First class BMX and then more scooters. Damn, a lot of this scooter thing went on for a while. Uh, we got Rockville BMX Direct Connection. Pretty cool. We got the Skyway ad here for the Skyway Street Beat. And these are all the Skyway Freestyle Riders. Robert Peterson, Hugo Gonzalez, Scott Freeman, Maurice Meyer, and Eddie Roman. Pretty cool ad. Pretty cool ad. I like it. The half pipe, the ultimate. My lord, look at the size of that half pipe, guys. Jeez. That thing is massive. We got three riders in the air at the same time. I wonder how long it took them to time that. <laughs> That's really cool though. I like it. Showdown at the Enchanted Ramps. Great shots. That's a great shot right there. Golly, more and more freestyle. Still on that huge quarter or half pipe. That's really cool. This is kind of X Games-ish with the size of the ramp. I like watching Ramp Riders, though, on the X Games. I used to love watching them. I always thought they were pretty awesome. We got a... Uh, oh, boy. What is this one? Joe U Industrial. Huh. Never heard of... Or I don't remember them. That's strange. Freestyle Masters. AFA presents... Uh, Freestyle Masters, March 28th and 29th, 1987. At the multi... Multi... What is this? Multlamo County Expo Center in Portland, Oregon. We got a freestyle, oh, BMX introduces freestyle for spectacular magazine. So I guess it looks like I'm missing a page here, guys, by the way. But it looks like uh, BMX Plus had their own freestyle magazine out for a while. I do not remember that at all. So that's that's pretty strange. And oh, here we go. Radical Rick. Now, I'll, I'll, we'll just look at the artwork. I'm not going to read this whole issue. But uh, one of the things about BMX Plus, um, I loved BMX Action. It was probably my first choice as far as reading magazines. BMX Plus always been a close second. Um, but honestly, I would if I got my hands on either one of the magazines, I was super pumped. But this is kind of what uh, BMX Action didn't have, as they did not have Radical Rick. Uh, Radical Rick is uh, is iconic. So I love Radical Rick. And I one of the things I used to love doing is like, sometimes I'd get a BMX Plus and I'd flip it open to Radical Rick and <laughs> kind of read the comic first and then go through the magazine because I just I just love this character it's really really cool and look at the artwork. I love Damien's artwork I follow him on uh, Facebook uh, Damien's on uh, Damien Fulton he's on Facebook he does a lot of art still and his stuff is just still massively massively impressive and I really wish that I had that artistic ability that that this guy has I just can't I can barely draw stick figures but when you see this it's just amazing and he still he does beautiful work Okay, let's keep on going here. <laughs> this is the bag. This is the bag lady in the uh, in the Dominguez thing they were talking about earlier. That's really cool. Wow, check him out. That is awesome. I don't know how this dude got up here on the on the half pipe with that and the slippery slippers. Guarantee you, he fell after that. And we have the last ad, and we've got that AXO ad there. Oh, well, it's not an AXO ad, but he's running the AXO colors which is really cool. It's a mongoose ad. And that is it. That is it, my friends. We're, 
Last page, we're all finished. BMX Plus 1987. Oh, I'm sorry, April 1987. It's all done. 30, 34 minutes. Not too bad. Uh, what did I think of that? What did I think of this magazine? In my opinion, I liked it. I liked the Grand's coverage. Uh, I think it was a little bit leaning more towards freestyle, but still a very good magazine. All right, guys, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. I'll get this thing posted up tonight, and I will see you guys in the next one. I got it. At first it was hard, nobody believed me. Ever since then, I'm making it clear. This my year. This my year. I hustle in the dark with a bright my head. Get the bright idea.